I reckon that all of you know what a skeleton is, but do you know what the functions of that skeleton are? And by functions, we're talking about what it does, what its role is, the purpose that it plays. So let's see if we can detail this for you. First of all, guys, I want to talk to you about the skeleton performing the role of shape and support. So a function of the skeleton is shape and it is support. That's kind of easy. So a couple of things about shape. Well, human beings generally are upright, okay? So we've got an upright shape or we could use the term an upright walking posture. And that of course influences how sporting technique is done. We are bipedal as human beings. We walk on two legs, we run on two legs. That informs that shape and that technique that we use. Now, now um, finally, we have varying, what we refer to varying shapes and sizes of different individuals and indeed of different bones. So the very specific nature of that kind of human posture, that human shape, lends itself to a representation in sport and in movement. Now, secondly, I want you to think about movement itself. All right, so our second function is movement and when I talk about movement here I'm talking about movement which occurs in the skeleton at the joints so let's look at the whole body here at least in the skeletal form we've got joint shoulder elbow wrist hip knee ankle and so on and so on and so on this is where movement actually occurs within that and we can describe these joints as what we refer to the ones at least let me just do that differently the ones that I've just stated to you as our examples, I don't know why I can't write this, of freely movable joints, okay? Or we might refer to them freely movable, or as we might refer to them as synovial joints, okay? They have a synovial cav cavity, where they have a synovial membrane, they release synovial fluid. These are what we call freely movable joints. Now, the third function of the skeleton I'd like to think about is that of protection. And there's lots of examples of this protection, okay? Protection, let's complete that P, protection. We are talking about protection by the skeleton of various, <laughs> various things going on here, of various soft tissues. So let's look at some examples. Well, we have got the cranium, the old bonce, the old brain cap, the, the big bony thing on our nut. That protects that cranium, the soft tissue of the brain inside. If we look at other examples, we've got the ribs and we've got the sternum protecting the soft tissue of the chest or the thoracic cavity. These areas, what they do, and I'll give you another example actually here on the, this is a vertebra by the way, let me just be clear, that is a vertebra, singular vertebrae. And of course we have this cavity where the spinal cord runs through. This is a form of protection of a soft tissue. And I'd like you to think that what the skeleton does, it encloses, it encloses, and once it's enclosed, it protects to enclose and protect. It sounds almost like a sort of police slogan somehow. So let's just do some examples. We've got the cranium. We've mentioned that already, protecting the skull. We've got the ribs. Could mention the sternum there as well, of course. And we've got the vertebrae. I'll make this plural this time because, of course, the spinal cord, um, cord is running through multiple vertebra. So vertebrae. So. We've got these examples. Now, I just want to bring you back to cranium just for the briefest of moments, just a reflection point, really. You know, imagine that a, a horse rider in an equestrian sport falls off, woo, falls off, and lands on their head, and they bang their head, and the skull protects the brain. But of course, we know from conditions such as concussion that the, the soft tissue inside the head can actually get damaged by bouncing on the inside of the cranium itself. So this is, to an extent, is a bit of a dichotomy point. Yes, it protects, but the cranium can be the part of the body that also damages the brain if it gets shaken, for example. Just a little intriguing sort of notion for you to reflect on. Now, I'll do this one in glowing red for obvious reasons. We have got the notion of blood, Number four, blood cell production. The skeleton is where blood cells are produced. So what are we talking about here? We are talking about blood cells being produced in the bone marrow. That's an A there, the bone marrow. So let's just have a look at this. We've got the tibia, we've got the femur, we've got the ulna, we've got the humerus. Inside the the, um, the the cavity of these long bones, we've got this bone marrow, and that bone marrow, its role is to produce blood cells, and it produces red blood cells, RBCs. It produces white blood cells, RBCs, of course, um, transport in the blood and they carry oxygen and CO2, white blood cells, part of the immune system. And we also get the production of platelets in the bone marrow too. Now just be careful with platelets, 
because platelets are not um, cells in their own right, they're cell fragments, but they are produced in the bone marrow. Now, finally, let's finish this off with our final, our fifth, our fifth function of the skeleton. We're interested in mineral storage, mineral storage, okay? And by mineral storage, what we're referring to here is the notion of excess calcium, that mineral which is crucial for healthy bone growth for example that is stored in the skeleton we've also got phosphorus phosphorus is important both from the perspective of muscular contraction but also preventing muscular pain we've got iron which is stored in the bone and it's used to form the heme group of hemoglobin on the red blood cell that transports oxygen and co2 and these are all released into the blood Okay, so they're released to the blood. So it's kind of useful that the blood is being produced in this same location. So these are the functions of the skeleton. 